Well, thank you for joining me today for this webinar. It's right at 11 o'clock, so we'll go ahead and get started. So today we're going to discuss estate planning over the holidays, what you need to discuss with your family and those type things in order to get your estate plan going. Um, as a reminder, if you haven't met me before, my name is Lauren Ward and I'm an attorney with a business law firm here in Spartanburg, South Carolina. My contact information is on the screen for you. Um, but once again, we're going to be discussing how do you talk to your family about your estate planning over the holidays? I know this might not be the conversation you probably want to have over the holidays. Nobody likes thinking about their incapacity or death, but this may be the only time you're together with all of your family that you need to discuss with for a while. Um, you know, Thanksgiving to Christmas to New Year's is a lot of times that we all come together as families. And so sometimes it's easier to have those hard conversations in person and while we're all together. So things you need to think about before you go into this, um, what topics do I need to cover? So I think the big things what you'll want to discuss, healthcare power of attorney. So just to know what this is, this is a document that allows somebody to make medical decisions for you if you are incapacitated. But inside the document, you get to make decisions such as on life support, feeding tubes, organ donation. Um, so that is one document you're going to want to discuss. And we'll discuss what you really need to talk about. The financial power of attorney. So this is allowing somebody to make financial decisions for you. Um, if you are in the age where you have minor children, if you're wanting somebody in your family to be guardian, you probably want to talk to them beforehand. So thinking about in your will, who's going to be guardians. If you're setting up a trust or a trust for minors, who's going to be the trustee? And if you're doing a will, who's going to be your personal representative? So those are all the big topics you want to talk about to kind of make sure everybody understands what's going on. I mean, realistically, no, you don't have to discuss any of this with your family. You can just do all those documents and then let it be when things happen. But a lot of times, the ways to avoid fights with families or avoid controversy and kind of keep your family together are to have these open and hard conversations. But this is definitely an individualized approach. Each family is different and you know your family better than I do. So what you need to discuss with them is up to you, but I'll kind of like to give you some guide points on things to think about. Um, I do think if we're all open and honest about what's going on, there is possibly less room for will contest or guardianships, conservatorships. So let's look at each of these documents. So the healthcare power of attorney. So in this document, you're going to list agents to make medical decisions for you if you can't make them for yourself. So things you need to consider, who in my family or who out of my friends can handle being calm in a medical situation? Because this may require quick decisions like, do you want to do this surgery? Yes or no. What do you want to do here? So you want to know who can handle this? Who can handle this responsibility? And while you don't have to tell somebody you're listing them as your agent, um, I think it is helpful for them to know because it is a big responsibility on them. And it's also important, I think, that you talk to them to let them know what you would want in certain situations um, because they want to make sure they're honoring your wishes. And you also want to make sure that they're comfortable making those decisions for you. You don't want to put somebody in that position who really doesn't want to be and who this would be too much of a burden on. So I think knowing what person can handle doing this for you and having open and honest conversations about what you need for them to do in this situation can be really helpful to your family. So that's what the health care power of attorney. We have the financial power of attorney. So this is what you have to make financial decisions for you. It can either be springing, which only comes into play when you're incapacitated, or durable, which means you it works now and in the future. One thing to think about with the durable power of attorney is that um, you want to possibly think about, do you want it springing or do you want it to be there all the time that is always active? So here's kind of one way to think about it. The people you're listing need to be people you trust. If you don't trust them, when you're mentally cognitive, are you going to trust them when you're incapacitated? That's just one of the things to think about. 
Another thing that makes a springing um, power of attorney more complicated is somebody has to declare you incompetent for them to be able to act. And sometimes that can take a while because sometimes it says two medical providers. Well, maybe you're, you know, don't have but one doctor, but you have dementia. Maybe you just have, you're pretty healthy, have dementia and only have your family doctor. Then they have to get you with a neurologist and those type things. So thinking about, do you want a durable or do you want a springy is a conversation to have on this financial power of attorney with the attorney drafting your documents. But inside of your family, thinking about this financial power of attorney, you want somebody that can handle balance in their checkbook. You do not want to have somebody who can't handle their own finances in charge of yours. So I think looking at your family, your friends to see, is there somebody that can do this for me? Is there somebody that I trust to manage my money? Um, because I know they manage theirs well, and I trust them to make the right decisions for me um, and making sure my bills get paid and those type things. Making somebody your power of attorney does require a lot of work on them if they have to do things for you. So I think having that conversation to make sure that person is comfortable doing that for you. I mean, you don't want to list your son or daughter or mom or dad and then them say, this is not something that I can handle. And then you don't have a backup to them and you end up going to court for a conservatorship. So I think it's important that this person can handle doing this for me. They are OK making financial decisions. They're comfortable dealing with that because money isn't something everybody's comfortable with. I mean, so realistically, who's your health care and who your financial power of attorney can be two different people because you may have different personality types. Maybe you have one kid that's a nurse and one kid that's an accountant. You know, and see, they probably have their different fits on what they could do for you because they have their different areas they understand. Or maybe it's the same person, but you want to make sure that the people you're making your power of attorney, they are going to have work to do because they're going to be making decisions for you, either medically or financially, if you're incapacitated. So it's important to make sure you pick the right people and that they're comfortable with it too. If you are someone that has minor children, um, having guardians for your children, I think is important to have a conversation before you just say, oh, I'm just going to put so-and-so in my wheel. They'll be fine with it. Maybe that'll work out. But then at the same point, you want to make sure these people are comfortable if something happened to you taking over your children. That is a big responsibility. So you want to have that conversation. It's going to be a hard conversation because none of us want to think about not being here for our children, but we need to have that conversation to make sure that our children are protected. And what we would expect if somebody else was to raise our children, you know, are they the same religion as me? Are they going to do the same activities as me? What is important to them? Um, I've had a client recently um, tell me it was important. They love football. Like that is something that is really important to them, their family. They love football. So they wanted to make sure that if something happened to them, their children would go to a family, obviously, that had a lot of the other financial, religious things the same as them, but also that enjoyed football because they think that was important for their children because that's something their children have grown up doing with them and they think it would be something that's important for them. So that's another thing to consider is, are these people going to raise my children like I would want them to? And having those conversations with them because you want to make sure that they're comfortable with it and you're comfortable with it. because That's a big decision to make. And hopefully you never need it, but it's better to do the work and not need it than something happen and not have planned for it. Then we want to talk about trustees. So if you're setting up a trust or if you have a trust for minor children or a special needs trust, any of those situations, the trustee is going to be over the money of that trust, either if you're incapacitated and you can no longer act or you're no longer here. A trustee needs to be responsible. A trustee is going to have to administer the trust estate. They're going to have to deal with finances, making sure they properly distribute the assets and dealing with all your beneficiaries. Um, so thinking about who you want to be the trustee, sometimes it's a family member, but sometimes it's not. Sometimes you want to leave a corporate person, a corporate entity as your trustee, like a bank or a trust company, because you know this is something nobody in your family can handle. And while you don't need to tell them this while you're alive, there's no legal reason to, sometimes it might ease the situation when something happens is to know, okay, mom and dad picked, you know, John Doe Bank to be their trustee. So they're going to handle everything and distribute the assets. 
and the kids know this ahead of time so there's not hurt feelings. That's definitely something you want to consider when you're doing this trust. And it's also something to consider is if I leave Jane as trustee and don't leave Bob and John, is this going to cause a rift between my children? Are there going to be fights between my children? So do I need to look at a corporate trustee? And kind of thinking of this and having these conversations, if you think it's valuable with your family, because sometimes the shock, if they don't know what's going on, can cause rifts in family members. And I know that's not what anybody wants is to have a rift between their family when they're no longer here. And then who's going to be your personal representative? They're going to deal with probate court. They're going to have to do kind of a lot of paperwork and stuff. They're going to have to be responsible. Um, personal representative probably isn't a fun task for anybody, but it's the one that's administering your probate estate. So kind of the same considerations as the trustee would be the personal representative. Can they handle dealing with, you know, if two of the siblings get in a fight or cousins get in a fight? And can they be that person that can handle it? If you don't think your family can handle it, there's corporate entities that will be your personal representative too. But if you're going to list somebody as your trustee and personal representative, you may want to have that conversation with them possibly to see, are you comfortable doing this? Or is this going to be a burden on you and you do not want to do it? Because you don't want to put somebody in a position they don't want to be in and having them feel obligated to do something they're not comfortable with. And then your estate plans not go smoothly like how you intended. So I think those are all the big things we need to think about and if we want to talk to our family about them and how we want to go about doing it. So say you've made the decision, you're going to talk to you know, your kids about who's going to be my power of attorney and those type of things. Well, what information do I need to gather from them at this time is a big thing to consider. So things you need to get from them. What's their full legal name? We're going to need this on a document. And while, yes, it's your children, you may not know, it, or if, if it's your children, you think, oh, I know their name. You may not realize what your daughter did with her name when she got married. Did she keep her maiden name? Did she drop her maiden name? Is her middle name in there? What's her name on her driver's license and social security card? So that way you know what her legal name is. Um, if you're, you're letting friends do this or whoever you're letting be your power of attorney or anybody in any of your legal documents, you want to make sure you get their full legal name. Things you'll also probably need to have for like powers of attorney, especially address. What is their current physical address? Not their PO box. What is their address that's on their driver's license? And also, what's their phone number? For a healthcare power of attorney, we list phone numbers in the document because we want to make sure that if something happens to you, you can call, they have the right number to call the medical um, office, can call the right person, have the right phone number, and you possibly need social security numbers. In a lot of legal documents, you don't list the social security number, but if in all of this, you're getting your estate plan together and you're going to go list um, people as like your beneficiaries on your mutual funds or your bank accounts, they're going to want social security numbers. So you may want to go ahead and gather that because probably when you start to do your estate plan, you are going to want to make sure your beneficiaries are up to date on different documents. So go ahead and getting that social security number can be helpful as well. So you've got all this together and you go meet with your attorney and you get it all drafted and taken care of. So what's next? I think it's important to make sure you let somebody know where you're keeping these documents. If they cannot find them after your death, there is no point in having them because they can't find them. You don't have to give them copies if you don't want to, but letting them know, okay, they're in my security safe deposit box at the bank. So they know how to get to them if something were to happen to you because they want to, you're going to need these documents to deal with probate or deal with administering your estate. And with a will, a copy can be accepted, but it requires a formal probate process and a hearing. So really, we want to make sure we always have that original will. So you've got it all taken care of, but knowing where to put it, keeping it in a safe place, and letting somebody know it exists and where it is. A lot of times we will get emails that family member of John Doe is looking for his will. Did anybody draft the will? Do we know anything about it? Because they can't find the will, but they think he did it. And then, you know, if they don't find it and you did a will, there's no point in having it because they're going in test state if they can't find it. So it's like you didn't do it at all. So it's important to let at least somebody know where you're keeping these documents. So that way, if something happens, they can gather them together and deal with what they need to do. 
with your healthcare power of attorney, um, once you get that set up, I recommend giving a copy to your general doctor. A lot of times if they're part of a system, like for here, if your doctor is part of the Spartanburg Regional System, they can upload it into my chart so everybody else can see it. This in that network. So you don't have to take it to every single doctor, but your doctor has it. And a lot of times your doctors are going to ask, do you have this anyway? So go ahead and just take it your next appointment. The financial power of attorney, um, having that conversation, whether you want it recorded with the register of deeds or not, um, is important to have with your attorney. So that way, if you do have it recorded, your kids or whoever you're leaving can always go get a certified copy from the register of deeds. And keeping that will and trust in a really safe place, because if something happens to you, they're going to need to be able to find those documents. So while I know this hasn't been exactly the most fun conversation to have with your family, if it's something you're thinking about and you want to make sure that people are comfortable with it or that you just let your family know their, your plan so something happens, there's not a big rift or divide in your family, while Christmas may not be the most fun time to talk about it, it's a lot of times when we gather together when we're with our family and friends and maybe just setting aside an hour to talk about this and then you're done. You've had that hard conversation with them and then you can get your documents drafted and now you're protecting your family and doing everything you need um, in advance to so make it easier for your family and to make it easier if something were to happen to you. So I know this was a little bit of a short webinar today, but since it is getting, we're at December 7th and we're going to be you know, getting together with our families for the holidays soon. I just wanted to go ahead and kind of go through this pretty quick so you would have some tips if you wanted to discuss this with your family this holiday season. Um, if anybody has any questions, feel free to ask them now. Um, I'll be happy to answer any questions or you're welcome to send me an email or give us a call. So my email is on the screen as well as our phone number um, and we'd be happy to help you out with any of these things. I thank you all for joining me today, and um, I hope you all have a wonderful holiday season, a Merry Christmas, a Happy New Year, and um, that you get to enjoy time with your family and friends, and that if you do want to have this conversation with them, that this gave you some tips to help you do that. But if you do have questions, um, I'm happy to answer them. Otherwise, thank you for joining me today. This will be on my YouTube page, and we look... Um, forward to hearing from you if you have any questions, but I hope you all have a wonderful holiday season.